Hello everybody, my name is Graham Elwood and you are watching The Political Vigilante. Boom. Oh man. I smell, wait, do you guys smell that? It smells like a false flag. Uh, they've been false flagging their way through the Strait of Hormuz. That is the false flag highway. <laughs> Strait of Hormuz is false flag highway. UAE based oil tanker disappears in Iranian waters in the Strait of Hormuz. <gasps> Iranian waters, those sound bad. I think we need war now. We need war with Iranian waters. We need to bomb the Iranian waters. Put, we need to explode freedom on the Iranian beaches. An oil tanker based in the UAE is missing after it stopped in Iranian waters three days ago and switched off as transponder. <sighs> Wait a minute could be no other reason for a ship to do that. It couldn't just, well, we're on short leave. Everybody gets to go into Tehran and have fun. Couldn't be any other reason. Couldn't be any other reason. But clearly this article is gonna completely verify this in the most you know, thorough, investigative, journalistic way, right? A U.S. defense official speaking on condition of anonymity because of the sensitivity of the situation said the U.S. military is aware of the disappearance. <laughs> oh, I'm sold. Well, if a, if a U.S. defense official, do they have a name? Oh, they're anonymous, an anonymous defense official? <coughs> CIA. <clears throat> yes. It's like former intelligence expert when you watch them on CNN or whatever. They're CIA ops. That's... This is, they, they've been trying this. First, there was the Japanese oil tanker a week, a couple weeks ago. Then the drone. We flew a drone into their airspace and they shot it down as there is their right to do. Just like if an Iranian drone came into our airspace, we would shoot it down. <laughs> if another country sent a drone over our airspace, we would shoot it down. Any country would do that. So... They're just pushing so, they gotta have this war with Iran. Why? I'll tell you why. This came from the White House. Not only does Lockheed Martin Thad missile defense system protect our citizens and allies, it also supports 25,000 American workers. CEO Marilyn Houston, right? This is on America Worker Day or some insane, I didn't even know this is a real thing. Look at these bombs. Look at these bombs. But I want to show you, I was, I was having a hard time pulling that clip off the internet. So I wanted to show you what this insane, insane ad, it's an ad that is put out by the White House's Twitter feed. So the White House, which is supposed to be a building that we all own, is doing an ad basically for Lockheed Martin. Now look at this crazy lady. Wait, where is it? There it is. Here's what she has to say. Proud to be here today. Hello, I'm Marilyn Houston, CEO of Lockheed Martin. We're very proud to be here on Made in America Day to demonstrate the THAAD system, which is a missile defense system protecting our citizens and our allies. And I'm just so proud to say it supports 25,000 American workers. So it's a great system, it's American made, and we're very proud to be here today. Hello, I'm Marilyn Houston, Listen CEO of Lockheed music. Martin. We're very proud to be here on Made in America Day to Made demonstrate the THAAD thing. system, which is a missile defense system protecting our citizens and our allies. And I'm just so proud to say it supports 25,000 American workers. So it's a great system, it's American made, and we're very proud to be here today. Hello, I'm Marilyn Houston, CEO of Lockheed Martin. We're very proud to be here. I can't listen to that nonsense anymore. <laughs> So now I'm all for American jobs, right? I'm all for it. I'm all for it. I made in America Day to encourage, oh, products made in America and to encourage Americans to buy products made in America. Okay, 
that seems reasonable. How much did that THAAD missile cost? Why can't we have Made in America Day as part of the Green New Deal? Because our solar panels and our wind turbines and our water pipelines. Imagine instead of all these oil pipelines and all these fracking uh, earthquakes that we cause and these pipelines that already have leaked. We had a spill in South Dakota, the, the Dakota Access Pipeline spilled, right? Imagine if we had an oil pipeline all this flooding we had in the Midwest in the spring, which really has lessened, we're going to have a food shortages and high prices as a result because the, the, when they harvest the corn in the fall, it'll be, what is it, 30, 42% less? 42% less. Only 58% of the corn and soybean crops were planted because of the flooding. What if we found, a, we, we, we had a creative bunch of engineers, we had this pipeline system and we got this flooding, took this flooded, drained it out of there, and then sent it to parts of the country that there, where there was drought or just stored it for when a drought does pop up. How many American jobs could we do? No, we need bombs. But the thing I want to show you, so in this response, there is this person puts death merchants, right? will kill for cash and oil, but then about face, veterans against the war. I want to show you what they had to say. So U.S. defense companies make a lot of money. Their best client is the largest military in human history, and they sell their products to other countries too, making the U.S. the largest arms exporter in the world. As a result, they are some of the biggest companies in the world. This all requires a unique relationship with the U.S. government. Not only do defense companies bid on contracts from the Pentagon, but all of their domestic and foreign sales must also be approved by Congress. As a result, these companies try and get as much support in Congress as they can, and they've adopted a pretty smart strategy to do so. One thing every member of Congress can support is jobs in their home state. So major U.S. defense companies spread their operations across as many states as possible. By doing so, they can maximize the number of legislators inclined to support their projects, regardless of political party. I did a quick search and found just a small portion of Boeing and Raytheon locations across the U.S., along with legislators who voice support for these companies in Congress. Now, if you include subcontractors, like the 3,000 hired by Boeing in California, you can imagine how many jobs are at stake across the country. This strategy is called political engineering, and defense companies have gotten pretty good at it. In August 2015, Lockheed Martin purchased Sikorsky Aircraft, known for making the iconic Marine One helicopter used by American presidents. That brought the company into the lucrative defense helicopter market. It was a smart business move, but a smarter political one. See, Sikorsky Aircraft is based in Connecticut, and the Northeast is one area where Lockheed had little political influence. Rivals General Dynamics, United Technologies, and Raytheon were the area's major defense employers, and therefore wielded the most support in Congress. But Sikorsky has 8,000 employees, and Lockheed instantly became the third largest contractor in Connecticut and gained the political influence that comes with it. The Northeast is home to some of the defense industry's most vocal supporters in Congress, like Rosa DeLauro of Connecticut, who wants Sikorsky to build the next Marine One in her own district. So that gives you an idea why this keeps happening, why these... Um why they're pushing so hard for war in Iran. 25,000 jobs. I mean, they just said it. They just said it. But this, 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 this is all part of it. This is the White House is doing an ad for Lockheed Martin. Are they doing ads on Made in America Day for any green technologies? Again, how many schools could this build? This one Thad rocket. Would this get drinkable water in Flint, Michigan? Did, would this end, how many homeless people could this <laughs> feed, clothe, house, uh, uh, retrain, 
get for put in a jobs program. How how many? But we've been wanting war with Iran for a long time, baby. Right? Just ask a hill. Our democracy, with its tradition of accountable power and open debate, is America at its best. And that's what we need. America at our best as we deliberately and resolutely confront the threat posed by the Iranian regime. Now make no mistake, Iran poses a threat to our allies and our interests in the region and beyond, including the United States. The Iranian president has held a conference denying the Holocaust and has issued bellicose statement after bellicose statement calling for Israel and the United States to be wiped off the map. His statements are even more disturbing and urgent when viewed in the context of the regime's quest to acquire nuclear weapons. The regime also uses its influence and resources in the region to support terrorist elements that attack Israel. Hezbollah's attack on Israel this summer using Iranian weapons clearly demonstrates Iran's malevolent influence, even beyond its borders. We also have evidence, although it is by no means conclusive, of attacks using Iranian-supplied or manufactured weaponry against our own American soldiers. As I have long said and will continue to say, U.S. policy must be clear and unequivocal. We cannot, we should not, we must not permit Iran to build or acquire nuclear weapons. And in dealing with this threat, as I have also said for a long time, no option can be taken off the table. But America must proceed deliberately and wisely. And we must proceed as a unified nation. Oh, I can't listen to that. Well, listen to this pimp. When I was a cadet, what's the first, what's the cadet motto at West Point? You will not lie, cheat, or steal, or tolerate those who do. Mm. I, I, I was a CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. It's like we, we had we had entire we had entire training courses. Uh, it, uh, it, it it reminds you of the uh, uh, the glory of the American experiment. These are the psychopaths that are. I mean, Hillary Clinton isn't really in power anymore, but. This guy is. This is the ruling class. Hillary's dead. The Clintons are part of the ruling class. That's what this is all about, guys. Money, oil, profit, power. Are, does Iran have leaders that are, might be crazy or dicks or whatever? Yeah, probably. Most leaders are. But we surround their country with military bases. We provoke and we provoke and we provoke and we provoke. We sanction, that's what we do. Because Iran had the audacity to put a country above our oil. I don't know where they got the nerve for that. And how dare they put a country right in the middle of all of our military bases. They just, uh, the gall of these countries. Look at these psychopaths. Look at this just deplorable psychopath. Hillary's a psychopath, Trump's a psychopath. I don't trust any of them. I don't trust the ruling class. The oligarchs want Kamala. They want Liz Warren. You know, that's who they want. That's who they want. They want Biden. So they're going to put these false flags up there and tell us that there's a war in Iran and we got to go bomb, 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 bomb. And it'll be a nightmare. It'll be worse than what happened in Iraq. Thanks for watching the show. Thanks for supporting what I do. Go to rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood. I put all my videos on Rockfin ad-free. For $10 a month, you get access to all of my and every content creator's premium content. So uh, go to rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood and sign up. And when you endorse my videos, I get residual income. When you subscribe, I get residual income. And it's all blockchain and it's cryptocurrency. 
which is amazing because some big corporation can't buy it out. You can also go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood to support the show. All these links are in the show notes. And I have less than a week to end my uh, Indiegogo going to Russia. I want to go to Russia with a camera and shoot a little mini documentary. I want to interview people. I want to see what life is really like in Russia. That's what I want to do. So um, please support what I'm doing any way you can. Thanks for watching.